Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to my channel. Here I am with another Unreal Engine tutorial and the focus of this tutorial is flip simulation inside Unreal Engine. We're going to use Niagara VFX system to produce liquid simulation inside the application and I'm going to go over all the key attributes and all the do's and don'ts you need to be mindful of when you're producing liquid inside Unreal Engine. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right, here I am inside Unreal Engine and um, I've got just a prop, an excuse to pour water into this uh, wall fountain. Since we've already covered fluid simulation, you probably know by now that I need to go into plugins and search for Niagara and make sure that Niagara Fluids is enabled and in case if you wish to sort of have the support of playing back the simulation via the sequencer you need to make sure that niagara sim caching is also enabled if you're enabling them for the first time then you need to make sure to restart the engine and load up the level now what i have in here is just my folder the prop is in there and a, an empty niagara folder ready to go first things first let's go to niagara system and this time, instead of creating an empty system or new system, I'm going to go and choose a template. So I'm going to go in here and type in flip. Now we have two categories, 2D and 3D. They're more or less similar. We have splash in 3D, splash in 2D, just a water surface in 3D, just a water surface in 2D. But we are going to obviously focus on 3D this time. So 3D liquid, grid 3D flip hose. And that gives us not only the water surface, but also uh, an emitter for free. So why not? We are going to select that and I'm going to press finish. Let's name that. NS for Niagara system underscore liquid. Once that's done, I'm just going to drag and drop that into our seam and instantly you can see it's working beautifully. Now, of course, so many things are off. If I just reposition it, we have to uh, take care of the size of the container and you can see the container fills up really really quickly basically a lot needs to be done to set things up so let's get to it and see what the key attributes are in order to bring this into a more reasonable shape all right let's open a uh, niagara system and uh, explore what sort of uh, particle system we're dealing with. I'm going to double click and dock that right next to my level. Right off the bat, you may have noticed that we have two main particle emitters. We have our Niagara system and notes to help you understand the emitters better. Now, in a nutshell, the first particle emitter, as Epic Games names them flip emitter. The main one is the first one, and that is in charge of the water surface, both for the emitter and the surface underneath. The second flip emitter is in charge of the foam, the longevity of the foam, the opacity of the foam, and the size of the foam. And it's already been randomized through random range flow. So you get min and max for all of these pretty much. And for the sprite size, of course, you can define how big or small you want the foam to be. And again, it comes down to your reference, the type of look that you're getting. There is no formula. There is no right or wrong way. I turned off the auto activate because it fills up really quickly. 
But let's address these two issues. The first issue is the bounding box. I want this to occupy this space. And the second issue is the height of the volume is um, already pretty, pretty high. So we want to sort of find a happy medium in there and readjust them. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning is a, a good use of user parameter. Now, I did dive into user parameter in my fluid simulation with Niagara and sequencer video. I talked about how to create them, the benefits, how to attach them to our emitter and even how to animate them in level sequencer. So basically, it's a really great way of extracting um, an attribute through so many um, attributes that we have here to be able to use them in the main user interface. So anything that you see as user attribute can be found in here under Niagara component because it's been extracted and linked to this Niagara component so we can find them easier. Of course, um, that's one place to find them. The second one is right next to parameters, user parameter and a copy of that list is also available here. So you have access uh, both here and here. And of course, you cannot readjust them directly on the attributes inside Niagara system. So with that out of the way, both height and bounding box are user parameters. So when I say that, it means that if I go into Niagara component, I should be able to find them here. There you have it. Water height, world grid extent. And I believe they're under user parameter rollout. Yes. So anything that we have as user parameter, we should be able to find them here. I'm just going to turn on auto activate and I'm going to immediately lower the water height to something really, really low, maybe 10. Again, the emitter emits so much water, regardless of the water height, we still get a container filled with water. So let's ignore that for now until we find a fix for it. As for the grid extend, let's uh, readjust these values. So uh, maybe 490 for X. And I played around with va these values before, so I'm kind of aware of a ballpark what sort of dimension i'm looking at now i'm punching numbers but i don't see the actual bounds show bounds will show me the container so i'm looking at it from the top view and it kind of looks okay uh, if i were to be too picky i would even adjust that a little bit more but let's say that's what's going to work for us uh, now we address these two issues Let's go ahead and target this emitter right here, which is also a big problem. The first one, the size of the emitter doesn't match the hose. And the second one is uh, the location of it is incorrect. And we cannot just go ahead and reposition it because if we're repositioning this, we are repositioning our water surface at the same time, not going to work for us. So let's go to the next chapter and address the emitter and the offset value of this uh, emitter. Now, to readjust the flow, the amount of emission and the position of our emitter, we need to actually go inside this flip fluid control emitter. I'm going to go under particle spawn and we have sphere location and we have velocity and that is going to solve both of our problems how sphere radius is actually the size or the diameter of our emitter right now it's 50 let's put something really low like 10 and instantly everything calms down we have uh, sort of a, a flow that more or less matches the water or the hose, the 
sort of nozzle that we have right here. The second one is the offset where it relocates the position of our emitter. So I am going to put something like minus 50, um, maybe minus 5 in, X, in Y. I need to check that to make sure that it's actually centralized and 334 Z. Let's go ahead and have a closer look. It's slightly N, so I may actually push that back, minus 40. That can work. That can work. I mean, we're not going to be too picky uh, about this. And now I have less flow. I can now comfortably go in here and readjust the height of my volume. So I'm going to go into water height and just make it to something more reasonable like so. And I'm going to go with auto active and it kind of start filling the volume. I just changed it to 100. So we have something to work with. Now that's good. We address that too. Before we move on to the next chapter, let's talk about precision and quality. When it comes to precision and quality, we have two main attributes to target. Num cells, max axis, and pressure iteration. Pressure iteration really doesn't do anything if you don't change the number of cells of your water. But the issue is if you increase the number of the cells of your water too high without increasing the pressure iteration, the volume of the water diminishes. So I am going to double this number to something like 400. And I am going to increase this number to maybe 180. And we get a slightly better result. Also, you may have noticed when I introduced sprite size, sphere location, I also mentioned velocity. So right now we have velocity in uh, X. You can potentially go in there and randomize this value. So you can go random range vector and go from 200 to 300. You can even change Y just a tad go from 10 to something like 80 to have a little bit of movement in there. If I just increase the size of the preview, you can see that it kind of jiggles now because we are actually tweaking the uh, velocity a little bit. So 350 might work even better. And now you can see we get a little bit of interaction. Now, if I go too much on the Y, we get a bit of a slant, uh, which may work, but in this case, it's a bit too much. So I'm just going to tone that down ever so slightly. All right, we covered... Uh, quite a fair bit of uh, attributes and properties here. I believe it's a good time for us to get into collision and how we can fine tune collision when we're dealing with flip simulation in Niagara. So let's move on to the next chapter and talk about collider objects. Now to demonstrate collision, uh, all I need to do is uh, an object as my collider. So I'm going to go to shape, maybe just a good old uh, sphere can do the trick. And the size is okay, I'm not going to tweak it too much. By default, there is no collision. So you can see I'm moving it up and down, nothing happens. So I can bring this halfway through the water and move it around, no interactions. Simply, because we need to add tags to our collision object. So with the object selected, I'm just going to type in tag. We have a component tag, which is for selection, an actor tag for collision. Under tags, 
I'm going to add an element and in here I'm going to call that Collider. Believe it or not, that was it. Uh, that's something that I already did with this uh, geometry right here. You can see I have a tag Collider and to prove the point, if I select the volume and move it around, you can see I'm producing waves because it hits the object and it recognizes it as a collision. Let's test our sphere. I can now push that in and you can see it kind of collides. Now you may say, Rosa, that is really, really subtle. I need a more dramatic uh, splashes. So this is more like a, a droplet. Well, I'm glad you asked because that is also another user parameter that you can use at your disposal. So if I select my fluid simulation and scroll down, we have collision, velocity, multiply. I can increase that to a very high value. And now you can see I'm getting a very dramatic result. Whether if it's too much or not, it's a different story. I just wanted to show the extreme side of it. I can just uh, <laughs> show you how dramatic you can be with this. I might actually add a little bit more volume in here inside the component. So I'm just going to go in there and why I'm selecting the sphere. I need to select my Niagara system. Uh, let's bring this to 150. That gives us a little bit of depth to work with. And now with the collision velocity multiply of 100, I should be able to get a very, very dramatic look. Now that is going to do it for the collision and that takes us to the next chapter which is connected to collision because every time we put an object in there we're producing foam whether the f amount of foam that i'm getting is too much or too little is something that we can tweak using the secondary flip simulation emitter that we have here so let's move on to the next chapter and discuss that. All right, we're almost towards the end of our tutorial. Let's go into edit summary. And again, if you would like to see the whole list, you can go always show full emitter. And that shows how many attributes we're dealing with only to deal with a foam. But the main ones would be the lifetime. So you can see we have um, lifetime foam rate, spray rate, and for the spray rate, we have another random range float to give us minimum and maximum. There is really no right or wrong. The size of the foam is something that you can control over here. So instead of eight, if I put four, I'm getting a smaller, rather smaller amount of foam. And in here, if I start with, let's say, three, now instead of five to eight, I have three to four. Obviously, if I collide, now I should be getting a slightly smaller amount or at least smaller foams to deal with. Now, if you want them to linger more or to stay more, then obviously what you need to do is to increase some of these numbers. Aging rate, I'm going to increase that as well to add a little bit of um, interactivity to the whole thing and you can see those foams will stay around much much longer of course that is a bit of a stretch in here but if that's what you need to do then you definitely can make use of it one last thing is forces and how to deal with forces I just noticed that the emitter, the position of the emitter is not quite accurate. So let's fix that.
All right. Now we have this sorted, let's talk about force field because yes, there is actually a way to use all the force fields that we have in Niagara system to be able to use them uh, in conjunction with our fluid simulation. The way that you use it is by adding it in your first emitter. So flip fluid control emitter. And what I want to do is to add them under particle update. So if I go into particle update and type in force, I have all different types of force. Coral noise is one of the popular ones. You can have drag, you can have vortex, vector noise, wind. Let's go with uh, vortex field. Now, something really, really important is happening. You get this uh, typical error message or warning rather saying that, well, some dependencies are missing, fix the issue, dismiss the issue in this case, because I noticed that as soon as you try to fix the issue, or at least Unreal tries to fix the issue, it makes the matter worse. So go dismiss issue. And another thing that you need to do, you need to actually put that on top of your grid 3D flip integrate particle velocity. And as soon as you do that, you can see this um, vortex force takes place. This is really, really high. So I am going to reduce that to something like 50, maybe even 10 to begin with. And um, the cool thing about that, you can actually while you're doing it, you can change the position of the force and you get a little bit of natural swirl in your Niagara system if you want to. So the rest is pretty straightforward. The way that this works is just like any other forces. You can add a curl noise. You can see we're already getting uh, a, a lot more interesting result having this swirl here. I can easily go in there and offset that, let's say I'm going to offset that to positive 50 to bring the force somewhere around here. So it matches the emitter pouring water and that is going to create a little bit of volume in here. I guess if I intensify this to a crazy number, I should be able to see it a lot faster. But you got the gist, it is totally possible to create effects like this and at the same time my um, collision works just fine and I have ultimate control over the force field, the foam, uh, the container, so on and so forth. All right, that was the gist of how you deal with flip simulation inside Unreal Engine 5. Obviously, this is still a little bit of work in progress and will be improved upon in the future versions, but it should give you a really good understanding of um, all the main key features that you can benefit from and you need to be mindful of. Uh, in the meantime, go and practice, have fun with it, see if you can use that in your own projects. That would be fantastic. Let me know how you go. And as usual, thank you very much for your support and for staying in touch, for your comments and your guidance. And I truly hope you found this video useful. All right, until the next video, see you guys later. <laughs>